So the first thing I want to do is I want to explain to you uh, the 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 uh, RPM and the feed rate for uh, turning on a lathe. Take note that when you go and step in front of your manual lathe for the first time and you look at the chart for spindle speeds, you can't just set any spindle speed you want. It tells you if you want this spindle speed, move this lever and this dial and this handle to this position. Okay, it doesn't say it, but you know what I mean. Okay, you'll have a chart to follow. It will give you different spindle speeds that that lathe can accommodate or it can run at. On a CNC lathe, you can set the spindle to whatever speed you want. But manual lathes only have a certain number of spindle speeds that you can utilize. So I'm going to put this out here right now, right at the beginning. Your spindle speeds and your feed rates that you solve is just a place to start. Okay, so this is not the end all. Whatever I'm about to show you, you don't come back, don't go to your instructor and say, yeah, but Adam said on a two inch piece of aluminum with a carbide tool, this is the spindle speed. That's not it. Because you know what? Uh, you know, the three of you can be sitting side by, or standing side by side on three machines, all identical machines. And probably we'll have to run them at slightly different spindle speeds, depending on the abuse one machine has taken over the other, uh, maybe uh, the work holding, uh, isn't perfect. Maybe one of your cam screws is out just a little bit. Um, maybe you you have a, a hard spot in your material. Maybe you got a worn tool. So many differences, right? So the feeds and speeds that you're about to learn are a place to start. When you get into CNC machining, your speeds and feeds matter, right? For optimal performance. You can set your spindle speed and your feed rate for optimal performance, you don't have to just use what's available to you. So we cannot attain the same type of accuracy and consistency on manual machines. Now, that doesn't mean it's inaccurate. It just means that it's we don't have that same control, right? So I can cut parts on a manual lathe, a good lathe in good condition, good working order. Uh, I can uh, hold a five tenths of a thousandth of an inch tolerance, 0.0005. Okay, but on a CNC lathe, I can hold 0 0.0001 consistently all day long. All right, so let's talk about first spindle speed. So here is the formula to solve the spindle speed for the lathe. Okay, so we need to know a couple of things. So let's talk about this. So spindle speed we call RPM, right? Revolutions per minute. That's our that's our spindle speed. Uh, the formula is uh, 12 times the cutting speed divided by pi times the diameter of the workpiece. Now, this is the actual formula for RPM. This is the formula that if you needed to solve RPM to some type of precision, this is what you'll use. So let me let me tell you what these components are. So CS, okay, is cutting speed. Okay, so really guys, this is an algebraic expression, right? We have some known information, 12 uh, pi, 3.1416 and RPM revolutions per minute. So we have some known information. Uh, cutting speed is a variable. We, we don't know what the cutting speed is and we don't know the diameter until we measure it. But technically speaking, this we know because it's given to us. This we know because we all know what pi is. And this we can just check with a micrometer calipers. So we have three pieces of information plus we know what that is. It's rotate revolutions per minute. So all we need to know in this algebraic expression is the cutting speed. So what is cutting speed? So cutting speed is the optimal speed required to remove this specific type of material. So every material has a cutting speed. So when we order material from a material supplier, uh, we'll, we can, uh, we'll either get with the material or we can request 
the cutting speed that is recommended for that material. But there's some things we need to know about cutting speed. Okay, so um, let's say for a, a piece of aluminum. So we've got this piece of aluminum. Okay, we have this piece of aluminum and uh, we're, going, we're going to cut it. Let's say it's a two inch piece of round aluminum and we're going to cut that. Well, what influences the cutting speed? Well, what kind of tool am I cutting with? Is my tool, is it carbide? Or is it high speed steel? You can imagine, so you can appreciate that your cutting speed of this material uh, can only be relayed to you if the manufacturer takes into consideration what you're going to cut with. High speed steel is not as hard as carbide. It's still hard enough to cut aluminum, but carbide can uh, cut material faster and at higher temperatures. So your cutting speed while using a carbide tool is different than your cutting speed of a high speed steel tool. What I'd like you to do as we discuss this um, information is to turn in your textbooks to page 370 if you're using the seventh edition unit 47 it's uh, called cutting speed feed and depth of cut okay and um, what you're looking for guys i don't know if you can see this maybe you can't um, so there's a chart here and it's called lathe cutting speeds in feet and meters okay so if you can find that chart have a look at it let me explain a couple of things about this chart because for you to solve uh, your spindle speed you first need to know the cutting speed and then we can solve this algebraic equation so if you look at this chart um, on the far left hand column you're going to see the material so that's this part of this, right? So this example, we talked about a two inch diameter piece of aluminum. That material list, that, that's what you're gonna start with. So go down to the bottom of that list, you'll see aluminum. Now, if you look to the next column right of that, you'll see that it is in a column called feet per minute. Okay, so if we're talking about inches, this is a two inch diameter piece of aluminum. Um, and we're, we're measuring with imperial numbers, then we're just gonna look in the feet per minute because the feet per minute is gonna be our cutting speed for aluminum. And notice that it says for rough cutting aluminum. Uh, we'll talk about rough and finish in a minute. For rough cutting aluminum, the cutting speed is 200. 200 what? 200 feet per minute. So let's put this in perspective. Imagine, you've got your piece of material in your machine, okay? I'm just gonna say not to scale, okay? So don't counsel me on my, my drawings, please. I have my lathe cutting tool right here, starting right on the end of my workpiece, and I'm gonna cut this direction. What 200 feet per minute means for cutting speed means if I were to, at this cutting speed, if I were to turn on my lathe and start cutting at exactly 60 seconds, I hit the brake on my lathe. And as my tool cuts along here, it's cutting a chip off. So if that chip stayed together, right? So as that tool's cutting, this chip is starting to come off the workpiece. At 60 seconds, I stop the lathe, and then I take that chip and I lay it out on the floor. How long is it gonna be? 200 feet, okay? That's what that 200 feet per minute means. The optimal cutting speed 
for aluminum, rough cut. And what's the other factor in this? Uh, notice, guys, lathe cutting speeds in feet and meters per minute using a high speed cutting tool. So, right there. Now we know that 200 is the cutting speed if we're cutting with a high speed steel cutting tool. Now we can solve our equation. Uh, we'll talk about, well, what if it's carbide? We'll do that in a second. Okay, so let's, let's solve this. Okay, so now we know this cutting speed chart tells us that the cutting speed for aluminum rough cutting is 200 feet per minute with a high speed steel cutting tool. So 12 times 200 divided by pi times diameter. Okay, so that equals, remember diameter, we can fill this in now because we know it's a two inch piece of aluminum. Okay, so let Put it. There it is. Okay, so 12 times 200. I should have known that top of my head. Okay, 2400 uh, pi times 2. So when you guys are doing feeds and speeds for me, so starting with spindle speed, pi, use the pi on your calculator. Hmm. Is that going to work for everything? Okay. Change that. Everybody listening, this is important because I don't want 50 different answers to everything. Okay, so moving forward, when we do any questions that has pi, this is what you put in your calculator. 3.1416, okay? This is it, this is what we're gonna use. So please type it in. Don't just hit pi on your calculator. Don't type in 3.14, 3.1416. Moving forward, everybody's answer should be the same now, okay? So 3.1416 times 2 is 6.2832. Uh, now we've taken our algebraic equation, have re reduced it now to a simple fraction. We're going to take 2400 and divide by 6.2832. And our RPM, therefore, equals... 381.9709702. And I did this to make a point. This is the RPM that we get when applying the formula for RPM so that we can cut this two inch piece of aluminum. I promise you, this is not available to you on your lathe. Okay, so if this was, okay, sidestep, if this was a CNC uh, lathe that we were going to cut this on, you're going to round this number 382 RPM. When you answer questions for me on your assignments or on your tests, follow the instructions. If it says solve the RPM and feed rates for the following questions, round to the nearest whole number, then just round to the nearest whole number, okay? But I, guys, if you really want to impress me, please solve the equation, write out the whole number, the entire answer that you get every single time you answer a math question, and then round it. Because what that does for me is it tells me that you know how to round, which we're gonna get into in math. It is one of the key components to being a good machinist, okay? So I like this. I like seeing the whole number, whatever you calculated, and then give me what the instructions call for. So when you give me your final answers on any of your math questions, we'll talk about this late, uh, um, on Thursday, okay? So I wouldn't put a box around this. I just wanna see it. But I always encourage guys to put a box around their final answer. So what that does for me is it leads my eye to your answer. And if it's wrong, I can look back and check your work. Because if I looked at this number ahead of this, 
381.9709 and you rounded it to uh, 397, I'm going to look here and say, oh, I see what he did. He just, yeah, yeah, it was just, and then I can just mark it right. You know what I mean? Like, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not a jerk, I promise. Um, but put your final answer, put a box around it, and then, then I know um, where that answer is. <clears throat> now, here's the other part of the RPM. This is also not available to you on your lathe. So what you might see on your lathe chart is you might see, um, I don't know, 260 RPM is uh, one available, uh, 325 might be another RPM, and uh, 390 might be another one, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose an RPM that is higher. I always do. Do you have to? No. I do. I always pick the next uh, RPM higher. Now, that is based on also material, right? If, if I know that this material cuts easy, uh, aluminum, I'm going to run it faster. That's no problem. Uh, you know, but if it's a, you know, a stainless steel and it's already kind of iffy, you know, because I've got to pick something that's not the exact number, um, I might choose to cut it a little bit slower, right? So I might go down to 325 because that's it's either 325 or 390, right? So that, that if those are my options, I've got to pick one to run RPM. Okay, so what I've shown you here is the actual formula for solving RPM. But we have what we call the shop floor formula. Okay, so I'm just going to write it beside. So remember what... Um, we got as an answer, right? 382 was our RPM. 382. The formula that you are going to use, you won't be using this, but this formula is based off this. The floor, formula you're going to use is called the shop floor formula, and it's four times cutting speed divide by the diameter of your workpiece. That's the formula you're going to use. Uh, why? Remember what I said about RPM? It's a place to start. And when you look at your chart, you only have so many options anyways. You, you can't solve this exactly and apply it. Or you can solve it exactly, but you can't apply it, right? Because it's not available to you. How this works is um, four goes into 12 three times, right? And uh, so 3 goes into pi approximately once. So it can kind of eliminate itself, right? So how many times does 4 go into 12? Okay, it goes in 3 times. How many times does, uh, sorry, how many 4s are in 12? 3. Uh, how many 3s are in pi? 1, right? So uh, essentially we can eliminate pi. So we bring this to 4 times the cutting speed divided by diameter and we eliminate pi completely, right? So let's, does it work? So let's go four times 200. That was our cutting speed uh, time divided by two. Okay, so four times 200, 800 divided by two equals 400. 400 RPM, the first number we got was 382 RPM. It's a difference of 12 RPM. This is why we use the shop floor formula, because you know what? Um, this, this formula that I choose to use, uh, uh, that's available to me, um, probably would still pick 395, right? It's 5 RPM off of 400. So you can see, why it, because it's, it's not, we can't apply what we get. It's very rare that you'll solve this, and it'll be available to you on your chart. So we're going to pick something close anyways. So that's why we use the shop floor formula because we just need something quick to kind of get us to a place to start, okay? So remember this, guys. If I ask you what the formula for RPM on a lathe is, that's what it is there. If I ask you for the shop floor formula, it's all about the details. This isn't to set you up to fail, guys. This is just depending on what I'm looking for, right? If I'm asking for the shop floor formula, I just want you to rip me off a number here quick, 
right? Four times cutting speed divided by the diameter of the workpiece. And that's going to get us close, right? Okay, four times cutting speed divided by diameter. All right, you've got that. How are we for time? Good. Okay, so last piece. And then that's it for tonight, guys. Okay, so we've talked about RPM. We're just, our, so spindle speed, right, is our RPM. Let's talk about feed rate. The two go hand in hand. Your feed rate is um, connected or tied to your RPM, right? So this is why feed rate. So your feed rate is the rate at which the tool removes material. So your spindle turning is part of that equation. Has to be, right? Because the material is removed as the uh, uh, with your tool as the spindle spins. So feed feed rate is connected directly to uh, RPM. So the formula for feed rate is feed, which we'll talk about in a second, times RPM. So what is the feed? Go back to your unit 47, cutting speed, feed, and depth of cut. Turn the page, page 372, you're going to see another table. Okay, I thought I lost you guys. Okay, you're going to see another table. I noticed that table says feeds for various materials using high speed steel cutting tool. Okay, so we can use the RPM that we just solved because it's based on using high speed steel tool as well, right? So that's important. We don't want to solve for a carbide tool for spindle speed and then use that number uh, to uh, uh, solve our feed rate, okay? So uh, what is the feed then? Because you got feed rate and feed. So feed is the distance. So if this is our work piece and this is my tool, feed is the distance that this tool will move along the work piece in one rotation of the spindle. So when that spindle moves one complete revolution, the distance this tool has moved in that one rotation is the feed, okay? So it's a distance. The distance the tool travels in one rotation of the spindle. Well, how, how does that work? Can I, can I just move the handle faster? So this is based on using the automatic feed on the lathe, okay? So when I turn my spindle on and I engage my auto feed, if I could start that feed rate and stop that feed, uh, if I could st start the auto feed and stop the auto feed as that spindle turns around once, which I just, I can't do obviously, but if I could, then that tool would move a very specific distance. And that's the feed. So there is a, a, an optimal feed or distance that that tool should travel in one, one revolution of the spindle. Fortunately for you, that feed is given to you. Notice in the chart here, go in the left column back to aluminum because we're still working with aluminum. You'll notice that for a rough cut, we're still rough cutting, unless I tell you different, in inches, you have 15 to 30 thousandths of an inch. So the manufacturer uh, in this case says to you, and, and, and let's just say the, the manufacturer is the one who gave you this chart. Okay, so the manufacturer says the, the, the feed for this material with high speed steel cutting tool is between 15 and 30 thousandths of an inch. <laughs> well, what is it? How do I solve this, right? What do I put here? So some of this is based on experience, 
Some of it is based on, again, uh, the quality of your machine, uh, the quality of your work holding, how many times has that machine been bumped, how many times you've run a tool into the spindle, uh, how good is the, the tool itself, uh, how far do you have that tool extended out of the tool holder, right? Like there's, again, guys, variables. So there's a range of 15 to 30 thou. For the purposes of uh, our classes, we have to have something, right? So remember what I said to you um, about pi? 3.1416. That's what we're using. Everyone will use that moving forward. So here's the rule with feed in this class. When you get your, you look at your feed chart and you have to solve feed for any of your formulas, you're going to pick the highest number. So in this case, um, it's going to be 0 0.03. Our range is 0 0.015 to 0 0.03. And then we're going to pick 0.03, 30 thou times our RPM. Our RPM, uh, we let's take the shop floor formula, okay? Because that's what we're going to use anyway. Shop floor formula is 400, right? So what we want to do is figure out the feed rate. Okay, feed rate is 0 0.03 times 400, and that's 12 inches. So your feed rate is 12. Well, what is that? What 12 what? What are we solving? What is feed rate? Okay, it's 12 inches per minute. So this tool will move 12 inches in length while the spindle is turning at 400 rotations per minute. And in 60 seconds, if I hit the brake on that lathe, this tool will be 12 inches from its start position based on these conditions running at 400 rpm at a feed of 0 0.03 inches per rotation right so 30 thousandths of an inch it will move in every rotation so i multiply that by 400 rotations per minute and that gives me um, a move distance of 12 inches from start to finish in 60 seconds that tool will move 12 inches so notice guys how your feed rate is tied directly to your spindle speed as this changes or as this changes this changes there is a, a relativity there that we have to appreciate and when we get into cnc machining it becomes even more important that we uh, set our spindle speeds and our feed rates according to the optimal cutting conditions. Okay, so uh, as a closing thought to all of this, um, you do need to be aware of uh, what if I'm cutting with carbide, uh, because I'm pretty sure when you get to class, uh, you're going to be cutting with a carbide insert. You won't be cutting with high speed steel. I hope you are. And I hope that you're um, encouraged to make your own cutting tool. That would be even more beneficial. But what if you're given a carbide tool? So this is how this changes, guys. If your RPM was 400, and because that's based on um, a high-speed steel cutting tool, cutting aluminum, right? That's what we're talking about, using a high-speed steel cutter, and we're cutting aluminum. We got this 400 RPM. If this changes to carbide, this doesn't change. It's still aluminum. Um, how does this change? Okay, so this is just going to be what I expect from you guys. Whatever this number is in high-speed steel, you'll multiply it by 3. So your rotations per minute of the same piece of 2-inch Aluminum is now 1200 RPM. Okay, so the aluminum doesn't change, but your cutting tool does. Your cutting tool is now carbide. Whatever you solved in your shop floor formula, multiply that by three. Guys, is this an absolute? You know it's not. Because this is only a place to start in the first place. But we have to have something uh, to work from. And this is kind of our standard, okay? That we multiply our high-speed steel cutting RPM by three to get the RPM for cutting 
um, with a carbide tool. That affects this directly. Now this is 1,200. 1,200 times 30 thousandths of an inch, right? The, the feed doesn't change. The feed is still the feed. It's, it's the optimum amount of material that should be cut in one rotation. It's just now the RPM is going faster, so the tool is going to move along the surface faster. So 1,200 uh, times 0 0.03, now it's going to travel 36 inches per minute. So it's going to triple, right, which makes total sense. We multiplied this by three. So, guys, if you're asked to solve the RPM for a piece of aluminum using a carbide cutter, solve it with the charts. That's high-speed steel. And then multiply your RPM by three and then solve your feed rate.